happened one time for the good people over at WRFG 89.3 FM. Also, one time for the good people over at WBHH, that's WeBlazingHipHop.com. Also, got to say one time to our amazing sponsors, the good people over at the I'm So Shirt Company. That's right. The I'm So Shirt Company, they design shirts with you in mind. These shirts are designed for you to rep who you are and what you mean and what you stand for. Make sure you visit them at the I'm So Shirt.com. Make sure you tell them Big XL and the Ryan Dirty Show sent you. Okay, today is Friday. April the 24th. Today is Reopen Georgia Day for everyone who's choosing to participate. Our governor, Mr. Brian Kemp, has reopened Georgia um, in, in, a, in a very in small increments. He's reopened barbershops, um, beauty salons, tanning salons, nail salons, tattoo parlors. Um, and then Monday he will open restaurants and you can go dine in, um, bowling alleys. Um, but there's a soft rollout. He's having everyone still practice social distancing, but he has officially opened in Georgia for business. All right. Are y'all going out there? Are y'all rushing to catch the Corona or y'all going to keep your asses at home? You know, it's your choice. Do what you want to do, but whatever you do and however you do it, please be safe. We are still in the middle of Corona virus. COVID-19, the pandemic. All right. Okay. Let me see what's going on in hip-hop news here. Got to say one time for um my man 2 Chains. 2 Chains like, man, bump that. I got two restaurants, and I got to get these restaurants open because I got to pay this daggone rent. So 2 Chains has definitely said he is opening up his two restaurants, and um, he's going to make sure everything is, is very clean and safe for people to come in and enjoy their dining experiences with him. Gotta say one time for that girl Beyonce. Beyonce has sprinkled her magic and um, donated six million dollars to mental wellness. One time for her definitely, definitely doing her thing. Alright? Um, gotta say one time for my man T.I. You know T.I. has a podcast called X But Disciously, all right? NTI's new podcast, he just interviewed the uh, former U.S. Surgeon General, and um, they're definitely talking about COVID-19 and its impact on African Americans. If you get a chance, definitely check out Expeditiously. Um, very, very dope podcast. I got to say I'm a fan. Uh, one time for everybody who um, checked in to watch the NFL draft, it broke records, all right? This is the most viewed ever NFL draft. I would like to think this is definitely probably because we haven't had any sports, and um, everybody just wants to see sports. And um, gotta say one time, my man, Mr. Um, Barrow, Barrow, uh, quarterback for LSU, number one pick, going to the Cincinnati Bengals. So definitely salutes to him. And last but not least, my man Travis Scott breaks Fortnite records with his astronomical concert, and he also dropped a new song called "The Scots" featuring. Kid Cuddy. So my man Travis Scott yesterday definitely done his thing with that Fortnite concert. Okay? Okay. Um, let me give y'all birthdays really, really quick. I don't have a lot. Gotta say happy birthday to pop singer Miss um Keelani. She turns 25 years old today. Comedian actor Mr. Cedric the Entertainer turns 56 years old today. Um, as I go over to Facebook and check out some of my Facebook family and friends, gotta say happy birthday to a very, very dope MC out of the city of Atlanta who's been doing it a while, definitely been rocking with me for years. I got to say happy birthday to my man Reaper Mike. Um, definitely, definitely very, very talented brother. Definitely been putting that work in for years. Also, got to say happy birthday to one of the hardest working DJs in the city of Atlanta. Got to say happy birthday to my man, DJ Jante. Definitely happy birthday to DJ Jante. Who else we got? Oh, man. Very, very dope, dope um, R&B singer out of the um, East Coast. My man, Lavari Anthony. Definitely happy birthday to him. And last but not least, got to say happy birthday to um, Atlanta rapper, Easy. Definitely, definitely happy birthday to my man, Easy of Ground Mode Entertainment. Um, you know, I always like to tell you guys, um, if you know anyone celebrating their birthday, definitely a great way to say happy birthday is by checking out their social media. Check out their music. Check out their previous work. Check out what they got going on. And if you choose to follow them on social media, just drop them a hashtag, happy birthday, and tell them you heard it on the Ride and Dirty Show. And hopefully they're having a great day and living their best life and staying corona free. All right. Now, if you don't know, today 
April the 24th is National Pigs in the Blanket Day. That's right. Today, April 24th, is National Pigs in a Blanket Day. Now, on April 24th, we observe National Pig in a Blanket Day with just a few ingredients. Celebrated across the world, the term, offer, the term often refers to a variety of different dishes in the United States. Pigs in a blanket is often hot dogs or sausages wrapped in a biscuit or croissant dough and baked. Pigs in a blanket are generally served as an appetizer or as breakfast. However, it can be served at any meal time. All right, the way you observe pigs in a blanket day is very, very simple. No matter how you make pigs in a blanket, make sure you enjoy and share. All right? And if you choose to participate on social media, hashtag National Pigs in a Blanket Day. All right? Okay. Now, I let you know about our amazing sponsors. I let you know about Celebrity News. And I also told you there's National Pigs in a Blanket Day. I let you know about Celebrity Birthdays. Now it's time for me to let you know the word on the street, because you know the purpose of this show is to give people a platform to talk about their lives and how they're changing the culture, whether it's through arts, entertainment, entrepreneurship, philanthropism, religion. And today is no different than any other day on the Ride and Dirty platform. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, give it up for the ladies and welcome to the show, author Julia George. How are you doing, ma'am? Hey. Hey, hey, good, good. I'm doing great. How are you? Man, I'm 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 doing well. Uh they just opened up Georgia a little bit. Um I'm keeping my ass at home, but one time for everybody who's definitely going out doing their thing. Right, thank you, thank you. All right, the first thing I gotta ask you the first thing I gotta ask you, Miss George, is how are you holding up during the pandemic? What are you doing? I'm pretty much uh, pretty excited about my new book. It's called Amala Life on Lockdown. It's available right now uh, around worldwide, worldwide, like 13 countries, mm -hmm. um, via Amazon, Kindle Books, and it's getting a great response, and I'm so happy about that. Uh, it's, um, it's a great book about, you know, a woman going through abuse and how she overcame her situation and how um, she was able to get out of her situation and what happened to her and stuff like that. So I'm really excited about the book, and it's definitely making waves. Uh, I have a few directors in Hollywood talking to me about the story and interested to look further. Yeah, that's about it. And you were talking about Atlanta, and I studied in Atlanta. I, am, uh, I graduated from Shiloh High School. Uh, Snellville. One time for Snellville. Big up Snellville. So look, hold on, cause you jumped out there. You just <laughs> you just skinny dip jump right into the pool. We gotta we gotta take it slow for the people. <laughs> we gotta take it slow for the people. <laughs> okay. We're gonna get to the book. We're gonna get to the book, but we're gonna talk. Okay. About, we're gonna talk about Julia a little bit. First of all, um, you just let the people know that you definitely are an A Town native. Went to school in Snellville, but let, let's talk a little bit about um, about yourself, cause Julia George is not only an author, but you're an actress, you're a singer, you're a choreographer, you're a director. Um, talk about number one, being on the west, going from the south to the west coast, and talk about the different uh -huh. things you do, being a Renaissance lady. And what has made you embark on this journey in the entertainment business through all these other aspects? Okay, so basically, I did most of my films in India. I was an international celebrity kind of thing. So I was very passionate about my acting. So I did a lot of my acting when I was in India. It's, you know, it's a regional language known as Malayalam. So I did like three movies and I got kind of busy with my master's in women's health. And so I was kind of busy with that. So I had a lot of things going on at the same time. But I've done um, modeling and acting work. And so I'm pretty much an international celebrity. And I am trying to look for my big break in Hollywood and stuff. But right now, this, the writing gig is going great for me. So I'm really excited about how it's you know all turning out. Okay, now, what made you... What made you want to be a author? And who are some of the writers that inspire you? So basically, um, 
you know, it's been out there in my mind and heart about doing this writing business. Like, you know, to the story's been in my heart for a while. Like, I've I've seen glimpses of this character many times in many women, and you know, um, you know, these kind of situations happen to it, uh, women, women, men, and people around us. So I was kind of, you know, having this story, this this uh, hard to write this story out for a while. And it just happened, you know, one day, and I just sat through it seven hours at a stretch, and I did it because I had no other choice, you know. But it came out so great. My favorite. I think we lost you, Julia. Hello. Oh, yeah. My favorite authors are from India. Um, so basically, um, I like a, a lady known as, author known as Banamadi, and she's my favorite writer right now. Okay. All right. Uh, why did you choose the title you chose for your book? Well, it was, uh, it was out there. I have that name quite a while in my, in my mind. And, um, it just, you know, I, I told you I was like in a, in a free to write and I, I got this title and I was like, I'm staking with this title and lockdown. Hey, I think we're all going through the same mess of lockdown right now. And I think this story specifically because, you know, the way she is going through her whole life and aspects, it became very important for me to put that name down, like a life on lockdown, you know? No doubt, no doubt. Now, as an, as an author, how do you want your fans to receive this book? Basically, it's a very simple story, but it, it also has a lot of emotions attached to it because if you know a woman who's been through a lot of abuse in her life, or, you know, how she overcame it. It's definitely those kind of stories where it really touches the heart, especially being women to women and, you know, trying to understand all your phases of life and different aspects of life you're going through. So this definitely is that kind of a book. Just relax, read it, because, like I said, it was took seven hours to write this book. And it was kind of like a challenge for me to get it done. And I didn't put too much thought into it. I didn't put too much brains into it. I, I did it because it was... It was close to my heart, and I wanted it to be the same for other reader, my readers out there. Okay, now you said the book took seven hours. All right, that's not a long time. Um, the, the 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 book did it come from personal experiences? Did it come from experiences from friends, or was it just something completely fictional that you made up? It had a little personal experience to it. It had glimpses of others in it. It had a little glimpse of. You there, Judy? I think your phone's breaking up on me. Julia. Hello? Hello? All right. Yeah, I, I I'm sorry. You. I hear you. It is, yeah. So, yeah, basically, you know, it's, that, that was the pinnacle of it. Like, I just had the whole intention of getting it out there and, and making it a priority to see that it's said it the right way. Like, you know, I, I've seen so many glimpses. I've seen so many issues around women and how they're abused and they're just dumped into some facility or somewhere just because, you know, because parents don't want them or uh, the husband doesn't want them. And, and it, it's, it's a pretty, you know, a heart-touching story for many women who have been through a similar situation. So it definitely came to that part, you know, like to, it was my priority to bring that story out, to raise awareness, you know, because women are abused, there are men abused. There are so many situations out there which need to be voiced out, you know? So this is this story was kind of that off of a ventilation point for many out there. All right, now were there you wrote you wrote it in seven in seven hours. Uh was it hard to find a distributor? Was it hard to find people to work with to actually get the book into the marketplace? It it just rolled out. Like, you know, it was so nice because Amazon was like really up for it and it just went direct all the way through and you know it's now it's out in 13 countries and it's out in Kindle as well as the paperback you can get any kind of version you want out there you know just whichever you're comfortable with 
I'm so excited, and there are still publishers um, calling up and trying to find out how they can help out the, the book and how they can promote the book. So I'm really excited about the whole thing as it is. All right. Now, was this your first writing experience? And what made you what made you say, you know what, I can do this? I've written in the past, but it was not official. I just did it for myself. But it, this was the big official step up. And so it was pretty exciting for me. I was like, you know, this is the best thing to do for me as, you know, um, trying to get a great story out, uh, trying to raise awareness and concern about abuse. And uh, that's why I did this. All right. Now, you mentioned that people have reached out to you um, about possibly bringing the book to life. Um, what has that experience been like? Talking to people about possibly making this um, movie. I'm, uh, right, right. Like I've, I'm getting calls from India. I'm getting calls from um, I think Africa. You know, they're like, you know, I can, I can, uh, I want to promote this book uh, in, uh, in uh, via my my community, via my circle of um, news and stuff. So that's that's pretty been like you know a little um, exciting for me. It's it's like oh wow, you get a response out of nowhere, you know. And there are some people who are like my friends, and they're like, oh, yeah, you wrote a book. Oh, okay. And they're just sitting down on it. I'm like, oh, wow. So it's, it's a mixed response. You know, like your own friends are like, uh, yeah, you wrote a book, great. And then there's like people out of nowhere, out of like internationally calling up and telling me like, wow, this is a great, you know, great thing you did. You know, you're, you're talking about abuse. You're talking about things which are always shut down and, you know, not talked about usually. So we want to help you. We want to promote this book as much as we can. And that's pretty exciting for me, you know. Or did you self-publish or did you go through a publishing company? I I went through self-publishing. I did this via Amazon and it's the direct um, uh, Kindle version. So it's, but, but it did go on up, up the notch, like it's worldwide now. So it's pretty exciting. All right, definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, now, what would be your words of inspiration or your what would be your words of advice to uh, young ladies out there who would like to become an author? You know, just do it. Like, give it a little thought. And do do your little homework, but go for it. Don't don't think that you know you have to wait a while or you. There's always going to be people who are going to be like, no, you can't do it. No, you can't. Sit down, kind of thing. You know, like if you, if you want to be an actress or whatever you want to be in life, there's always going to be people who are going to be like putting pulling you down, and be like, oh, you're not worth it. You're not this. You're not that. So stop during the negative part and do the positive. You have to just do the positive for being the force for 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 being the enlightenment in your own life. You know, so just just find your way step up and find your way be like you know stop hearing the negative part and just do the positive okay and what would be your words of encouragement and advice to women dealing with abuse and mental health issues um mental health it's it's two aspects abuse is an aspect where you're physically put into a situation and tortured to extremes where and then converted into a mental patient so my issue is my concern or where, what I'm raising awareness for is mainly about which environment and people who torture you to extremes, people, those, those kind of people really need to be punished first. Then the patient, then the person at the outcome being punished as a mental patient. You know what I'm trying to say? Definitely. It, definitely. It's a big, huge, huge intention of 10 people or even two people who make a woman or a person go through the abuse, and they put put this woman through so much torture, and then she's just diagnosed as something for the world to see, and, and she's just put on the side. So, yes, my heart goes out to people who are really ill or who have a condition or something like that. It's like, you know, there's mental retardation. There's, there's things that you can't really reverse. And this is something which is created, you know what I'm saying? Abuse and then causing, paying people to call these kind of names to a woman or to a man to call them a mental patient, that is where my heart goes. That is where I'm concerned about. Like, where can you stop and where can you drop a line to stop this abuse? No doubt. 
Are there any plans for other books from you? Right now, I'm just so excited. Yes, definitely in the down, like you know, down the lane for sure. But right now, I'm just super excited about just doing the promotion of this book, and it's getting a lot of light. I just got the bestkindles.com. They um, they sent me a like a, a token of uh, gratitude, well, uh, gratitude, I guess, like a. Uh, a flat kind of thing saying, you know, an upcoming author. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's pretty exciting to just, you know, get embraces, get uh, get a feature um, out of nowhere. So it, it, it's getting out there, you know. So I'm, I'm pretty excited, and then I'm looking forward to um, hoping that, you know, more promotions and more people embrace this book and talk about these kind of issues and bring it to limelight, like these kind of issues are there. Yes, mental health is a great thing, but creating mental health patients and dumping them in an asylum is not, uh, it's, it's not cool. It is not cool. And people like this who do this kind of nonsense should be condemned, should be punished. Okay. All right. Now, how has social media and the Internet affected how you have promoted this book? The response is positive so far. I'm getting a great response. I'm getting people, like I said, you know, out of nowhere internationally, I'm getting people to talk about the book, to share their concerns, to share their uh, views about it, to to help me promote it. So I'm excited as it is. I'm getting a lot of good, positive vibes from many places. There's always going to be people going to be negative about it. Maybe your own people or maybe people you don't even know. But you have to stick with the positive and entering on media, whatever it is, you know, the show medium comes to you and tells you, hey, this, this is a great book and we appreciate you for doing what you're doing. So that is the best thing ever, you know. Okay. All right. So look, tell people how to find the book and tell people how to find you on the World Wide Web. Uh, so basically, the book is on Amazon uh, as the paperback version and Kindle version. Um, it's called Amala, A Life on Lockdown by Julia George. And uh, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter. Okay, no doubt, no doubt. All right, now where can they find you? And, and on Instagram, too. All right, now what are those accounts? Where's that Facebook? Where's that Instagram? What is that Twitter? You know, people like to keep up. Oh, uh... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Julia George Official is usually the name uh, on Instagram. It's Julia G Official. Um, it's Julia George 2205 on Twitter. So, yeah, find me. I, I'm there. And uh, my portal is there. Like, the Amazon author page is there. So you can definitely Google me up, look me up. There is a lot of Julia Georges out there for sure. But, yeah, there's only one writer, the brown girl, the Indian chick. There's one, just one, one piece. So you, you, it's it's easy to spot the brown girl out of the others. All right. So, I, yeah. Now I noticed you had a uh, virtual book premiere. Uh, how did that work? Uh, that was great. I was a guest over there. You know, um, it was it was women of wisdom. So it was a lot of women entrepreneurs. And they were pretty much excited to share the book. You know, I got a glimpse of, I got a moment to share my book, and they took it the right way. So I was so excited to just, you know, uh, be able to share the book. And they were like, oh, wow, this is pretty interesting. And I was like, thank you. You know, I was really um, uh, thankful for them to have me for the for just be able to launch the book as such. All right. Now, we're about to close this thing out. So the last thing I would like for you to do is read us a passage from the book. Let us know the name of the book one more time and read us a passage from the book, please. All right, here it goes. Amala, A Life on Lockdown by Julia George. This is the very first chapter. Amala is on light air China. Refreshments being served. She sits on her black sea and looks out through her window seat. Not much expression, just a straight face and awakened stare as she glances up. You live in China? The voice beside her whispered in a Chinese accent. Uh, Amla briskly turned and looked at the side seat. Amla responded 
Yes, it's been three years. I moved to China. I'm a lecturer. I teach at Shenyang University. How about you? Oh, I'm Mi Yang, proud grandmother of five grandkids. So, in short, I'm a retired teacher and a busy grandmother. Uh, I am Ju, uh, Amala, honored to sit next to a busy grandmother. And they both laugh. Me, you, young. Ah, don't you miss your family? Amala was about to sit her tea during the question. She heard the word family. She froze. She lifted her eyes from the cup of tea and threw the excess sight sign right in front of her. She blinked with a gasp of air and word, and she said, no, I don't have a family. With another breath, she said, I don't have any. And she quickly got up from her seat. I'll be back in a minute. Excuse me, Abla said. She quickly walked through the back. With a quick pause, she released her thigh. And paused when she reached there. Can I get you something? The aerostas asked Amla. Amla said, no, you could surely trash this cup for me. Sure, said the lady dressed in red uniform. Amla is dressed in all black with her diamond earrings and a pendant and her shoulder length hair combed to the left side. Their hostess walked up to her again, said, I can get you a refill on the seat. And if you want, you can stand here for a while. And stretch. Don't worry. I'm going to reply, thank you. That is a glimpse of the book. Okay. 90 right. seconds. Uh, yes. Miss Julia, I definitely, definitely appreciate you coming on the show, uh, sharing um, your experience in writing the book and letting us know about the book. Uh, before I say good evening to you. Thank you, thank you. One last time, let the people know how to uh -huh. find this incredible book. All right, guys, it's Amala, A Life on Lockdown. It's available on Amazon, on Kindle version. Get your copy today. It's a great book. 60 you seconds. Abuse women, you know, I'm trying to do awareness. I'm trying to raise my best uh, way to see that women of these kind situations are hurt. So please support, please contribute, and do your best to promote the book. Please put the word out there. There's a great uh, author right now, and her name is Julia George. Thank you for your love and thank you for your patience. Thank right. you for having me. Thank you for coming on the show, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That's Miss Julia George. I'll definitely, definitely check her out and make sure you get a copy of that book. It's your boy Vic XL. This is the Riding Dirty Show where we bridge the gap between hip hop and everyday life. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>